In today's video, I want to show you guys how to paint these really vibrant rainbow birds. I'm going to show you how to do this really loose and wild dripping technique, as well as a little bit of drawing. My favorite thing about drawing is how things that even look a bit difficult can be quite simple when you break them down into basic shapes and simple steps. So let's go ahead and get started. Since this is a rainbow painting, we are going to use a full rainbow of colors. On my palette, I have purple, red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Also a little bit of white and black for painting in the details in the branch on our birds. Now, if all you have is red, yellow, and blue, you can mix the other colors with those, with those colors. You'll get your green by mixing yellow and blue. You'll get your orange by mixing red and yellow. And you'll get your purple by mixing your red and your blue. So feel free to mix your own colors. Color mixing is quite fun to do and a good thing to learn if you don't already have uh, color mixing under your repertoire. But we do want to have the full rainbow mixed up and ready to go before we start with a little bit of black and white. For today's painting, we also need two palettes. I'm using paper plates, but you could use two pieces of wax paper, an old piece of plexiglass. You can even use old plates, uh, or if you have an artist palette, they work fantastic as well. The reason for these two palettes is we want one palette for our regular paint colors that we'll use to paint in our birds. And we want this second clean palette because to get this drip, we are in fact gonna mix really, really watery versions of our colors. And if we mix the water on this plate, we'll of course ruin all uh, our, our paint and we'll just start to be a big sloppy mess. So I have found it's really great to have two palettes for this particular painting. For brushes, we only need four brushes. I'm going to be using a number six round for filling in my bird's bodies. A number one round or any detail brush, a tiny little pointy brush for doing, well, the details, the eyes, the beaks, uh, the details and the little feathers. There are a lot of tiny little parts to this painting. So this brush is a must. I also love having this tiny little number six flat brush for doing details that require more of that flat edge. Now we'll also need a slightly bigger brush for dripping our water down and getting the rainbow drip technique. Uh, I like to use this big number eight filbert brush, but any large brush will do for this. Uh, if you have a number six bright brush, this would work fantastic as well. You can see uh, its size here compared to my finger. So you just want kind of at least a half an inch or a little bit bigger where we're gonna grab the, we want a brush that grabs a lot of water uh, so we can get the technique of the drip. So you only need four brushes. You'll need a paper towel woo, or an old rag for wiping off your brushes in between colors. You'll of course need a water container uh, for rinsing brushes, for uh, getting the drip water. I like to recycle old plastic containers from my fridge. We're gonna draw our birds on, so you're also going to need a pencil. And just in case you want to erase, you might wanna have an eraser handy. I like to use these fun, uh, stretchy, they're called kneadable erasers. They look like stick tack but any eraser will do. So you'll wanna have some drawing utensils. And last but not least, you'll need a substrate to paint on. I am using a 16 by 20 canvas here, but you could use a little 11 by 14 canvas. You could use a drawing board. You can use any kind of heavy paper. Uh, even if you had a black canvas, this would look really cool on there. Even a piece of cardboard. So if you just wanna practice this painting, um, use anything that you have at home to paint it on. It does work on all the standard sizes, so really your imagination is the limits. To begin our rainbow bird paintings, we're gonna do a little bit of drawing. So I want you to grab your pencils. It could be an HB pencil or a 2B pencil. 
Now, erasing off a raw canvas can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, and oftentimes your graphite will just smudge around instead of fully coming off. So I'm gonna be pushing really hard with my pencil because pencil's hard to pick up on a camera. But for you drawing at home, I want you to just push very lightly so just you can see your marks and that will make them a lot easier to erase. We're gonna start by drawing on our branch. Now I love the way these drips look, just water falling down the canvas. So I actually start my branch up pretty high. I start my branch around here. So this is halfway, and then I come up a little bit more and sketch across the branch. I usually stop my branch just about a centimeter before the end of the canvas, and it comes mostly flat, straight across, and then I like to pull on a few little other branches here. So let's take our pencil, and we're gonna start by drawing this branch. So I'm just gonna start coming across, right from the left-hand side, Swooping across, across. Maybe just turning up a little bit at the end. And I've come very close to the edge of my canvas. If you would like to add a few little branches coming off to make your branch look a little bit more realistic, you can. They're almost making Y shapes here at the end of the branches. So I'm gonna come here to the edge of my branch. I'm gonna make a little delicate Y shape. Maybe have another one coming off up here. Sometimes I like to have another branch. Coming off through the middle. And maybe even another branch coming down here. at the end. You can just have fun with your branch. You can have as many little offshoots as you like, or you could have no offshoots. Uh, just let it take you where you want, and we'll see what comes out. After you've finished drawing your branch, we are gonna start drawing in our birdie bodies. Now, all these birds are basically just oval shapes. Their bodies are ovals. Their heads are like uh, little half circles coming out of the top. Then we've got the wings and we've got all of our tails are these fun, um, almost like little feather finger shapes, little stylized shapes that sit uh, within each other. So you've got a little whoop, whoop, whoop to create our tails. We're gonna start sketching across the birdies but first, I want to show you about framing our composition today. Now, I have an equal amount of white on each side of the birds. So the amount of white that is on this side is the exact same that's on that side. So our birds are really centered uh, on the branch. In order to make sure that the birds are centered, I always like to give myself a few little reference marks. So I'm gonna start my birds just a few inches inside of my branch. So I'm gonna come, I don't need a ruler or anything, I usually just use my pencil, and I wanna come in a few inches on this side, and I'm gonna put a little tick here. Now I wanna make sure it's the exact same amount on the other side. I usually just kind of use my fingers to block it out. So I'm coming down again about this far on the other side and I'm gonna put just a little tick right there. So all my birds are gonna fit in this section of the branch and that will create a really beautiful uh, white frame around the color part of this canvas and these bright colors on a plain white background just really make it pop. We do have six birds in our painting today. So I also like to give myself a little tiny tick in the center of the birds so that I know how much room I have for each bird. So I'm gonna find the center of these two ticks which is about right here. That makes it much easier for me to know how much space I have for my birds. 
We've probably all done one of those posters in high school where we start to do our lettering. We have a gigantic R, O, U, and then we've got to fit in the rest of our letters and they squish in there because we didn't really block out how much space we'd need for each letter. It's the same thing with our little birds today. We do have our space blocked out, so now let's start with the bodies. The bodies of all of these birds are little oval shapes. And I'm going to start on the far left with our purple bird. Our purple bird is an oval shape that's pointed straight up and down. The purple bird and the green bird are the two biggest birds in this painting. The green bird, which I like to call my, uh, my awkward bird, his wing looks a little contorted, but I actually, he ended up being my favorite bird. I just think he's uh, really cute. I sometimes feel like an awkward bird. This bird is uh, just a little bit smaller than that bird. So I'm going to start drawing this oval shape right here. Just draw on your body. Remember, we want to fit about three birds in this section. So I'm going to take up about a third of the space for my purple bird's body. Gonna draw a sweet little oval right on top of my branch. Good. After you've sketched out the body, we now want to do the head shape. The head is in the center of the body and it's just a tiny little oval shape. Now there's something I absolutely don't want you to do. When we're drawing birds, if we have a body here, Something I see a lot is we'll put a head on our bird and it gets pinched in at the end uh, like this. But birds' heads don't pinch in. They come straight down into that oval. So for a, a more realistic bird head, you'd have your oval and then the head just comes kind of straight straight out on each side as opposed to pinching in towards the oval. So really have that head come straight down. They really nestle into their body sometimes. They don't have necks quite the same way that we do. So I'm gonna do my oval shape. I'm gonna put it right in the center. And I'm just gonna have it coming straight down and into the body of my bird. Now once I've got the head on, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch out this bird's wing. This bird's wing is on the right hand side and we're just gonna swoop down. We're just gonna swoop down to create a little bit of side wing here. So I'm just gonna swoop down a wing. You can pull it out a little bit and then just kind of have the tip of the wing coming down. Excellent, so we've already got a little body on. We've got a head and we've got a wing. Now I often like to sketch in the eye and the beak. The eye and the beak will indicate what way the bird is looking. So in this painting, the eye and the beak are very close to being in line with each other. The beak being ever so slightly below the bird's eye makes this bird look like it's looking a little bit down. The direction of the beak indicates which way the bird is looking. So on this bird, instead of being angled a little bit down, it's angled a little bit up, and it really makes it look like that bird is looking up. So you can play with that, and you can make your purple bird like it look like it's looking in any direction that you want. So the eye is fairly close to the side of the face, so I'm gonna draw a little circle for the eye, and then I'm just gonna draw a little tiny triangle coming out of the side of the face for the beak. Once we've got the face drawn on, we're gonna go down to the tail. So I have my tail coming straight down, and it's almost like little U shapes, three that fit inside each other. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So I'm coming down with my tail. Whoop. 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 Good. 
So we've already almost finished sketching in one bird. Now this is just a line drawing, so you really want to get the feel of the volume or roundness or texture with this kind of drawing, uh, but it's amazing how we can take a really simple line drawing of these basic shapes and then fill it in with some highlights and shadows to make it look really round and come alive as a voluminous shape that has uh, volume and weight. So I do like to sketch in a little bit of the direction of the markings in the wing. I have the markings kind of just swooping on a little bit of a downward angle. And instead of just drawing straight across, I like to draw these in little tiny lines coming down to show that the direction of the feather, that wing is kind of folding down. So I'm gonna pull a few little dark lines down the wing. Okay, good. Now we're gonna start our red bird. I always like to leave a millimeter or two in between the birds, uh, just in case I wanna bring the beak out or the tip of the tail. So for the second bird, we're gonna start with the oval shape of the body again. Only this time, our bird isn't front facing. He's a little bit uh, on the side and he's a little bit angled this way. So this bird is uh, straight up and down and that little red bird is on the side and is angled ever so slightly this way. So the head is angled a little bit more to the left hand side. So we're gonna draw a little oval. This bird's a little bit shorter than the other bird. So I'm gonna draw nice and close. Wanna make sure I have room for one more bird this orange bird, which is next, is the orange one and the blue one are the smallest little birds in this whole painting. So these red and purple birds can really take up more of the room in the third we're working in. So I'm just gonna sketch a little oval for my birdie body. Maybe puff out his chest a little bit here. Then we're gonna draw the little tiny well, these guys are close. They're in love. A little tiny half circle for the head. Again, please don't pinch the half, the head in. Just have the head round and then come straight down into your oval. Oh, this guy looks really kind of hunkered in. He's cute. So now we're gonna do our wing. And our wing again is on the right hand side. It's just gonna swoop down. And we are just gonna pinch that wing, pull it out from the body a little bit and into a point. So I come down the body, pull that bird wing out and into a point. At this point, you can give it a little beak. Now, just because I find my birds, even with these basic shapes, they start to take on a character. And this bird looks like it really admires the bird next to it. So this beak is angled up just a little bit this beak I angled up quite a lot. This bird is looking up at the purple bird. There we go. We're also gonna draw these little black details in the wings, just sketch on that basic direction. And then the tail. So the tail is coming out in the same direction the body is pointed. So if we were to draw a line down the center of this oval, the tail's coming out in that same direction. If we had the body this way and then the tail came all of a sudden down that way, it would look like the tail was, uh, was, was, was broken. So we're gonna have our tail come out right from the direction of the body. And this time I just did four little side feathers, a uh, little um, elongated U shapes again, just going whoop, 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 and then one more. So this is a short one, slightly longer, even longer, and then a medium size length one here. So I'm gonna pull out a little tail. Okay, good. So we finished our second bird. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw in our third bird. I like to have this guy 
be just a tiny little bird. So this guy's just a little oval, forward facing, straight up and down, just like this first bird. So I'm gonna draw a tiny little oval. And then a head again, just a little half circle. This sweet little bird just has a tiny tail, just whoop, whoop, two little feathers. Or this one again, one, two little feathers coming down for that tail. Good. Now we want to draw the beak and the eye on for this tiny little orange bird. This orange bird is facing the front and I have the eyes as just these tiny little lines on this bird down here. I arc the eye lines up a bit so it looks like he's uh, smiling and a little tiny triangle shape for the beak. Now uh, these little bird's eyes are kind of more straight across which maybe looks, it makes him look a little bit more like he's sleeping or restful than uh, uh, smiling. So you can really play with the line of the eyes. So I'm gonna put a little tiny beak shape on, little tiny eyes. There, it's a sweet little bird. Now this bird doesn't have uh, the wings showing he's front facing. The yellow bird, which is next, is going to be a little bit bigger. And this bird is fun. It's the only back facing bird in this painting. So we're going to start the same way though. And we're going to go ahead and just draw on an oval. I like this guy to be a little bit puffier, a little bit fatter. Now if you notice in my drawing here, I'm a little bit shy of my center mark. So I'm actually gonna make this bird uh, quite fat, just cause I need to start uh, filling in a little bit more space. So I'm gonna make him a nice pudgy bird. Get on the body. Then do that head in the same way, just a little oval shape is all we need. Just some basic shapes. My yellow bird is looking up and off uh, into the distance. So the eye is kind of in the same space. I'm having him look up and off left. So instead of the eye being on the right hand side, I'm gonna put it on the left hand side and I'm really gonna pull that beak up a little triangle like he's looking way up uh, this way and then we're gonna get into the wings and we're seeing the full back of the bird and his wings are just sort of wrapped around his body here so we're gonna draw the wings coming in almost like a little And then they're going to slowly come together in another V. So V in, and then a little V down. So it's like a wide V where they come up from the shoulders, and then a really narrow V here where they pinch down towards the bottom of his little birdie bum. Now the striations, the mark on his wings, point together like a V shape coming down each wing. So I'm gonna sketch a few of those in now. You can have as many of these as you want or as few. Okay, good. For this bird's tail, I have two feathers coming down. One, two. And then a little feather kind of on top in the middle of those. So I like to come down one, two, 
and then kind of a little feather in the middle. So one, two, a little feather in the middle. You could draw the little feather first. So you could just do one coming straight out and then whoop, whoop, two more on either side. Last but not least, I have one nice long tail feather coming down here. Okay, good. So you've got purple, red, orange, yellow. And I hope by now you can kind of see the method that I've used for shaping up these birds. Oval body, half circle head, beak, eye, wings, if you can see the wings, and then some tail feathers. Now, uh, this painting is very abstract. Uh, I didn't do anything fancy for the tail feathers. They're just uh, stylized geometric shapes uh, that resemble feathers in the direction of feathers. So you could really play with your tail feathers and do something wild and crazy if you want to go rogue. We're up to our yellow bird. So we only have green and blue left. So I'm gonna come in here now and we're gonna do this uh, big old green bird. Now this is the tallest of all the birds and he's looking off uh, and to the right. These birds are looking in opposite directions from each other. Maybe they got in a fight. I, I don't know, who knows? We're gonna go ahead and draw a nice tall bird. I have this tall skinny bird. Again, a little oval for the head, <clears throat> little oval shape for the head. This bird is essentially the same as our purple bird, just longer and leaner and looking up and off. So we're gonna do that wing. And this one has tail feathers a lot like these two birds just some long uh, swooping feathers coming down. I have one, two, three at the top and then two long ones coming down. And remember, we do want the tail feathers coming out in the direction of the body. So this bird was ever so slightly tilted, so we've got the tail feathers coming out. All our birds that are straight up and down, the feathers are going to be straight up and down. So I'm gonna draw a few coming off the body here. One, two, three, and maybe a couple really long ones. This is a big old bird. Do his little eye, his beak, and then I wanna have some details in his feathers. Last but not least, we want to do our little blue bird. Now I like to have my little blue bird ever so slightly uh, angled up and off to the right here. Now this one's just really very subtly angled. I might really angle my birdie today. So I'm gonna go ahead. I like my blue bird to be uh, nice and small. Give him a little head. The wing is going to be on the upper side today. Little eye, little beak, and then I'm going to have a little tail coming out in the direction of his body. Just a couple of these little feather shapes. We're gonna put some of the stripey details in the wing coming down this way. Okay, good. Now I stretched this bird out a little bit too so I could fill um, the color part out to where I wanted my line to be. 
Uh, but you can have your bird coming straight up and down if you want. It's your bird, it's your tree. Now that we've drawn our birds on, uh, I have smudged a little bit. Um, I'm using a 4B pencil so you can see it. Now the higher the number of a B pencil, the softer it is and it's a bit more like charcoal so it smudges a bit more. If you use the harder pencil or if you have any kind of lines that you don't like at this point, we're going to do a little bit of erasing before we fill it in with the paint. Especially anything that is where your drip area is going to be because it's liquidy, it's, it's liquid paint, will also be a bit more see-through. So let's just take a minute, grab an eraser and erase out any lines that we don't want showing through. I'm going to erase my little tick points. I don't want them coming through the paint. Any little smudges. Now, when we drew on our birds, we drew these oval shapes. I don't want us to paint those lines in. So if you're going to do any erasing before you start, make sure to erase this pencil line, you don't have to erase it completely because the paint will cover it and you probably won't get it to erase completely because you've drawn on the raw canvas. But do take an eraser and just gently lighten uh, just this part, just the, where the oval is inside of our bird's bodies. Because of course, we're not gonna have that line in our birds when they're painted in. It was just to get the shape of the body. Now, the line that we are going to have instead is instead of the oval coming up and over, I actually kind of dip the neck down a little bit. So I just took my eraser, you can still see it a little bit, and I just gently lighten, especially in that yellow bird here. The yellow is a very uh, translucent color across brands of paint. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, just trying to make our job a little bit easier when we go to paint it in. So if you have a lot of erasing to do, feel free to pause this video at any time during any technique, which is one of the best things about painting at home. When your drawing's done, we are going to start dripping across our colors. So put your color palette to one side and grab another palette that you can get really runny and just mess it up with a bunch of water. We're going to be using uh, our large brush. I'm using a number eight filbert today and I'm going to be coming across with my colors. Now I like to start with the purple bird. For this purple bird, I actually mixed a little bit of red into my purple, so I got more of like a orchid purple. Today I'm going to show you the plain purple, just so you can see the difference. Uh, it's a bit more of a cool amethyst purple. So if you need to mix purple, just start with uh, red. Always have the blue is a much more pigmented color. So if I was mixing a purple, I would want to have more red and then just a touch of blue and then even a little tiny bit of uh, white. The blue does tend to, that's a lovely purple there. So you could definitely drip down. You see they're very, um, they're very similar in color. So you can definitely mix your own purple from primary colors. Either way, you're gonna take a little tiny scoop of your purple, you don't need a lot of it and then you're gonna drip some water into it. I wanna make it nice and juicy. So I just want enough water that if I were to tip up my plate, uh, it would sort of start to flow uh, really slowly across the plate. Now when I drip down, I don't just start with these single drips. I kind of like to have a bit of a field of color that comes right up to the side of the bird. So I'm gonna take my big brush here, and I'm gonna start applying some paint around the bird, and then I'm gonna go into my water, and I'm gonna start applying a bunch of water, I'm gonna let it drip down. 
If you don't have an easel for this technique, you can just hold your painting up with one hand. You can even sort of control the general direction of the drip. So if I want to pull a drip down this way, I'll start the line. And the coolest thing about dripping is if I were to drip here, my water will stay in the original trajectory, the path of that, of that line. So if I want to loosen this up and I drip here, the water follows the line. So if I want to come in here and lighten this up, the water follows the trench that has been made uh, by your first drip. So I want another drip coming down here, down the center. So I'm just gonna do a little tick, kind of guiding that water where I want it to go. And then I'm gonna drip right from the top again. There. If you need to add a bit more color, just mix some uh, water into it first. So I just mix a bit more water into it first, then add my color. You can see what a mess I've already made here. You could choose to keep it really bright or really light. You can also go over this again with a second coat. So really just have fun with it. I like to come under my second bird a little bit and I don't know if you can see this on camera, but I did get a little bit of paint where I don't want it. So I'm just gonna rub that off while it's still wet. It's okay to go over your tail a little bit. I might just pull this out. drip there. So I just start the line and then I go into my water and my water will find where I started the drip and it will keep going. If you're impatient you can hold it up and it will drip a bit faster. This does get all inside the easel there and that's cool. This is a really loose messy painting. So just start another drip there, because I wanna, okay. Now if I wanna stop that drip and have like a half of a drip, I can just absorb some of it with a paper towel. Now we're going to move into our red and we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to rinse my brush off and I'm going to take some red, I'm going to move it over, I'm going to drip a bit of water into it here. I'm going to start coming underneath my bird, right over towards the orange bird. I'm going to bring a little bit of my color down. And then I'm gonna just drip water into this color to thin it out. I'm gonna overlap my purple. Oh yeah. This is how we get them to blend together. So add a little red there and then a little water. I'm gonna let it drip together. And kind of filling up right in the spaces in between our birds. I kind of want another drip. Good. Now I'm going to continue on with my orange. Rinse, rinse, rinse. 
Okay. Rinse, gonna tap my brush off here on the napkin. Gonna grab a tiny little uh, scoop of the orange. You don't need too much. Add a little bit and just kind of come in with my water. and let it drip down, overlapping a little bit with my red. Just coming in with some plain water after. I've lost a bit of my tail, but because there's so much water mixed into my color, once this dries, I'll definitely be able to see my pencil marks. And if you can't, that's okay. It's always easier drawing something the second time. So I'm going with really rich, vibrant drip. You can add more water to this and have it be very subtle and almost pastel. Just do what feels good to you. This painting can never come out the same way twice, of course, because we're letting the water uh, mix with acrylic, our wet medium, do all of the work for us. Okay, good. Next, we're gonna get into the yellow. Now, a fun thing about how I did this painting is I didn't actually use the green to make the drip. I feel like the yellow and the blue mixed together create such a lovely green. So for this painting, I brought my yellow over right underneath of my green bird. And then I pulled the blue in and it created this beautiful green kind of mixing into some tealish colors here right on the canvas. So I'm gonna do my yellow bird now and I'm really gonna pull that yellow right across to underneath of where my green bird is. So I'm gonna rinse really well. We only have two colors left to drip. I hope you're enjoying this technique. Oops, sorry, I mucked up my drip here. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse and put on my yellow. So go ahead, use your big brush. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you use for this kind of technique. Uh, you could use a bright brush or a large flat brush. Uh, I'll show you now. If you don't have a bright brush, you can use this large, or um, a filbert brush, you can use this, this bright brush or a flat brush Brights and flat, flats are essentially the same. They are uh, square uh, rectangle shapes. We just want a big brush that we can add some water to our paint with and apply it to our canvas. So I like to pull my color right up. You can see the yellow is a bit more translucent than the other colors under my yellow bird, all the way under my green bird. And I'm going to start dripping down. I like to have this really big field of yellow here. And then just drip water. Let it flow. Just see what happens. You never know. I'm gonna overlap lots of this yellow with my orange, just creating a variety of tones and really allowing these to merge together to blend and soften. I don't know if you can see, I've got this lovely red streak uh, coming through my red or my purple, a red streak coming through my purple. Just play with this. 
you should enjoy this part. Okay. Now I'm gonna pull my blue across into my yellow. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my blue. Just a titch, this color's quite dark. Gonna mix a bit of water in it so it's more fl fluid, more flowy. And then I like to pull a nice field of blue right under here. I'm gonna start on this, on this side of the blue and I'm gonna slowly drip starting on the outer edge of my bird and coming in towards the yellow. Ooh, that just flew over there. <laughs> and you can see it's mixing this really lovely uh, green right under our green bird. So without going into more blue, just using the bit that's on there, uh, I can tap it in under my yellow. I could grab a bit more blue. There we go. And it gets this lovely, lovely bit of green. Sort of uniting our colors together. some yellow over. There. It's just really bright and fabulous. A bit more blue here. Right, just go drip wild. Now, I can't even hold this palette up because it is such a sloppy uh, mess, a rainbow mess, which is the best kind of mess. So I'm just gonna set this off to the side now. And there, we've got this lovely, uh, rainbow drip. So we're done the drip part of our painting. Now we're going to get into filling in our birds. I first do my branch and a little bit of an outline in black and then go over it with some color. This really gives our birds a bit more of a three-dimensional look and it helps us pull a little shadow to define our birds before filling them in with their rainbow colors. So if you want to switch your water you can. Uh, I'm just going to use the same water here. Uh, give your brushes a good rinse and let's get into our black outline. To start our birds, we're going to need to grab the palette that doesn't have a whole bunch of water dripped onto it again. I'm just going to slide that right under here on my painting station. And we're going to be using our two detail brushes. I like to use this tiny flat brush to pull on the branch. It's a square, so it's got that lovely um, hard flat edge, which is great for doing straight lines. And then for doing curved lines, we wanna use these tiny little pointy brushes. So I'm gonna start with my branch. Now I have my branch coming over top of some of the bird's tails and underneath of others. So my branch comes over top of the purple bird, the orange bird, and the blue bird. So let's do our branch, grab a tiny flat brush or any uh, tiny uh, square or rectangle brush you have at home. We're gonna use a little black, use carbon black or ivory black or Mars black. Now you can work in front of your canvas like this. I'm just gonna stand up and off the screen here uh, so you can see the painting. So I'm gonna come in from the left-hand side and I'm going to take my branch in front of my purple bird and behind my red bird 
So skipping the red birds where the tail is in front of my orange bird and behind my yellow bird and behind my green bird and up and in front of my blue bird. Just keep this brush uh, using its nice skinny edge. So I don't want to use the brush this way. I want to turn it so it's on that nice skinny side. I'm going to come down. Do some of these little branches just for fun. You can even wrap your <laughs> branch around the side of the canvas so it looks like it's coming in from the side. Add another little branch kind of coming in behind my yellow bird. And then I had some little add a little bit of water to your black will help it flow. Some little branches just branching off from the center branch. There. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to put my little flat brush back in its watery home. And we're going to grab our little number one round detail brush and we're going to start outlining the birds. So I want you to grab your tiny detail brush and let's get started. I sometimes find when I'm trying to get a really thin line out of black, it's helpful to add a tiny bit of water to my paint and this just helps it flow around and it helps it stay in a bit of a thinner line than if you were to say just use the paint straight from the tube. So I'm going to outline my birds, except I'm not going to outline that part that came across the top of the oval. I'm really just going to stick to the outside. Just get as thin of a line as you can, but if you do get a thick line, don't worry about it because we are going to cover it with our color anyway. Gonna outline the wing. This would be a little shadow here, so you would go a bit heavier if you like. This layer is just gonna shine through. I'm gonna pull in these little marks in the wings, but instead of just drawing a straight line, I'm gonna do little tiny pulls down. There is going to be a little bit of a shadow under the chin, but I'm going to arc it down under the head this way instead of the big top of the oval. I'm going to come down this way, and I usually just do a couple little pulls, just a little bit of a shadow, little dots even, kind of make it look like feathers. Okay, And then I'm going to outline my tail. I did lose quite a bit of my tail when I went and painted in my drips. That's okay, because we can just add it back now. Okay, good. Just keep it really soft and loose. We are gonna paint a bunch of color into the head, but it is a bit translucent, so I often like to paint in my eye now, just for practice and so I don't lose it. And I'm going to fill in my little beak with some black. <laughs> or my big beak. So the guy's got a big beak. 
It's all right. I like a big beak. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to continue on with our birds in this way. So for the red bird, again, I'm not going to draw the top of the oval where it cuts across the head. We're just going to do the little head shape. But maybe just pull a bit of a shadow under the chin. Fun little marks in the wings. Do your little eye. Now, if I don't like where the pencil line was for my beaks or my eyes or my tails, I just paint in the line where I want it. You're not committed to anything that you've done in pencil. Uh, and if you have some marks where you chose to paint a different line than you drew, you can always erase that. Just make sure your black is dry first. Gonna add a little bit more water to my black here. Just help it flow. And then I'm gonna paint my tail feathers back in. Now make sure you don't have so much water that it drips all across the canvas. That would be sad. I have my branch coming here. Uh, and this tail is in front, but that's okay because the paint will cover it really well. Feel free to pause this video at any time in between birds. You can just paint at your own pace. Start my little orange bird here. I give it a really light outline, as light as I can. Pushing very gently, just with the tip of that brush. Give them a little beak, just a little line. Oh, these birds always turn out so cute. He's my favorite, I think. A little shadow in this tiny tail. Oh, don't you just wanna hold him in your hand and kiss his head? Okay. So I do want to put some shadowing in the orange bird. This time though, there's going to be just a little bit of shadowing right underneath the head on each side of the body. So I'm going to take my black. I'm just going to pull in a little bit of a shadow here. Good, just little, just little taps in there. Keep going, do our yellow birds, to the body. Head. Eyes. Beaks. Tail feathers. You see, I've just got three little loops and a long tail feather here. Now we want some of the stripes. You can start at the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter. Just see what happens. Just have fun. If yours isn't just like mine, that's good. It's not supposed to be. Just using this as sort of a reference for the subject matter and the colors. But we really want our own artist's hand to shine through. And maybe you have a tendency towards larger, softer shapes. Sometimes if we haven't painted before, we don't know that we have an innate way that we make marks. 
but after having taught thousands of people, I can tell you we definitely do have a style that we just maybe haven't developed yet. And sometimes I see people get discouraged if if their painting isn't like their source image. So if they're painting, say, a beach wave from a photograph, they want it to look just like the photograph. But a beautiful thing about painting is it can capture more than a photograph. It can capture time and energy in the form of brush strokes. So instead of just all being smooth and perfect like a photo, you can get brush strokes that represent even energy in a painting, like Van Gogh, who had those radiant lines, uh, thick lines of light emanating from sources, or really cool skies and exaggerating the warmth of, say, a cafe uh, lit up in, in the streets of Paris. Uh, to capture the feeling of how warm it is inside of a building uh, at nighttime when the sun has set. So if you are just starting painting and you're feeling discouraged of that your painting isn't coming up the way you expected it to, always take a minute and look at your painting. Sometimes give it a little break because we can get sensitive to it and try to notice the things that are coming through that you, that you do like because that's how we start to develop as artists, of course. I'm rambling, so let's get back to painting our birds. There. Okay. Moving into our big green birds. This guy always reminds me of a penguin for some reason. It's a stiff little waddle. I gave this guy a lot of little tail feathers here. There's no reason, I'm just kind of putting them in. Just gonna see what happens. I trust my intuition. Sometimes I'm like, yes, and sometimes I'm like, ah. Oh. But part of the creative process is just learning to, to work with it. So, here we go. Let's see. Give him a little head here. Okay. A little beak. <laughs> or a big beak. Uh, now I fill my beaks in with black. <clears throat> you could always fill them in with a different color, like brown or orange or yellow. This green bird gave me so much trouble when I was developing this painting. Uh, I redrew his wing on different sides the whole time and I made him longer and shorter. Eventually I just left him and eventually I think he's one of my favorites now. It's a toss up between the green and the orange. You may have a favorite bird when you're done your paintings too. Okay. So remember, this is just going to kind of show through as a little bit um, of a shadow when we pull the color over top. Then when you're ready, you can go ahead and start your bluebird. You don't have to keep pace with me. Paint at your own pace and your own time. Just pause the video if you need some more time. Give him a little shadow under his chin, maybe. Maybe this guy, too. Maybe even this guy. 
Okay, once you've got your black on, we absolutely need to make sure it's dry before we start filling in the color into our birds. Filling in the color will be the last and final details. So you can just wait for this to dry. Acrylics dry by evaporating. So typically it will depend on how humid it is. It's a nice spring day here today. So mine will probably dry in about five minutes. If you're impatient and you have a blow dryer, uh, you could always give it a good blow with one of these to uh, save a few minutes. So now we're going to start filling in our birds. I like to start from my purple and work across to my blue. The way I fill these birds in is really sort of easy. I take some of the plain dark color and I go around the outside of the bird, uh, any areas I want a little bit of a shadow. And then I mix a lighter version of the color and fill it in in the middle to help create uh, a more of a round look. So if we were to start with the purple, I'd wanna take my dark purple and use that as the outline and then take some purple and scoop in a whole bunch of white and really make a much, much uh, lighter, even lighter still maybe, a uh, version of that purple. So here I've got almost a, a pastel purple as well as some of that dark purple. So I like to use one of my little detail brushes to go around the outside. Uh, you could play with either of these two brushes, your small flat or your small round. We want to work fairly quickly. We're going to pull in the dark color and we want to blend it in a bit with the light color. So the dark color has to stay wet in order for the light color to, to blend in. So I'm going to take my little flat brush I'm just going to really quickly come around the outside edge just going right over top of the black don't worry about your eyeball I'm going to come over the black marks around the outside edge right over top of that black If you're a bit of a slower painter, you could work in sections. So we could do the body and the head first. So I've pulled in a dark purple shadow. Then I want to rinse my brush. And right away, I'm going into that pastel purple. And I want to pull that in the middle. And then I'm just going to lightly sort of blend it and tap it out into the shadow color so that it's lighter in the middle. And then darker around the outside. Get your finger in there if you don't mind. could grab some more dark purple if you need it. Otherwise, you're gonna take some of your light purple and you're gonna come in between the dark purple and the wings. You can always add some more darks later if you want to. So I might bring a little bit more of this dark purple back into my wings here. Especially around, oops, that's too much. Whenever we're working in a small area, we wanna make sure to grab just a little bit of paint. Otherwise, we'll get some of those big gobs that we don't want. Just gonna try to blend that in there. There we go.
We're going to add some whites afterwards to really accentuate some of these highlights. But for now, we're just going to get these medium purples. Okay. When you're done the body, you can get right into the tail. So outlining in the dark color right over the black. Now you can stick with the little flat brush. Uh, sometimes I find in a bit more of a rounder shape area, I like to use my little round brush coming in between the darks. Some of that pastel purple. You know, a little bit more here in my belly. You could even just grab a bit of pure white, just the tip of the brush. I like the belly to be. I'm just gonna circle it around in here. Blend it in little taps. Just slowly going to the outside. There. Okay. A little bit more of the light color in the head. Okay. Good. Once you've done your first bird, you can rinse off your little round detail brush, go into a tiny bit of black, now we're just gonna dab our eye back on. Just dab our eye back on. Good. Now rinse both of your brushes and we're gonna get into our red bird. Now again, I like to have some of my plain red and I move a little bit of it over just a titch and I'm going to mix a bit of a lighter version of the color. So I want to have a pink color and then some plain red. Now use whichever detail brush you like best. I'm going to use my tiny little round brush here. Work in sections. Can I do my belly and my head? Rinse in between the light colors and the dark colors. So I put the plain red on. I'm gonna go into my pink, my lighter pink, blend it into the belly. I didn't go too light with my pink because I do like it to read as a bit more of a red bird. But if you want to go lighter pink and make it more pastel, that's up to you. That would look great too. Can't really go wrong with rainbow things. Oops. Okay. Pull some of the light pink in between my wings. We're going to lighten these up with some uh, highlights and some shadows. We just want to peel in a base color. Uh, acrylic paints look fantastic when you can build them up in some layers. Okay, you can do the tail. I might do the light color first. This tail comes over top of our branch. Uh, wash or just tap your color off on a napkin. And we're just a little bit of color here because we're working in a small space going to outline it in the darker red, the plain red. Just 
want subtle differences between the light and the dark areas. This light pink at the top of my head. It's covering up some of that black. Maybe grab a little bit of white for my belly. Just a titch, just a little. Just kind of messy. Fill that in. Okay. Now when you're done filling in your red bird, we're going to get into the orange bird. Now the orange bird is the only bird where we actually use a few colors. So I actually do the outline in dark red mixed with a tiny little bit of orange. So I'm starting to bring a little bit of the red into the orange bird. So I'm going to take just a little scoop of orange and tint it with a tiny bit, uh, just a little, just a tip in there and then just tint it with some red. So we've got a bit more of a, a reddish orange. Then for the belly, this orange, when you mix it with white, goes to a really kind of pale chalky orange. And I love the way this more yellowish orange looks in here. So if I were to take some white and mix it with just a tiny bit of orange to get this kind of pale, almost like a creamsicle orange. But I love the way that looks with just a little bit of yellow in there. Now you can just warm it up. So this, this bird is made of these three colors and it's just lovely and, and soft and warm. So that's a big scoop of orange with just a little bit of red to make the shadow color. And then some white with just a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow to warm it up. So we'll go with these three colors. So I'm gonna use my pointy brush here, my little number one round, and we're gonna go with this reddish orange color around the outside of our bird's body right over top of the black and right over top of the little shadows the side of the body okay and we'll do the body and the head first and then we'll get up there and we'll do the or down there and we'll do the tail okay then i'm going to grab a little bit of plain orange rinse your brush off sometimes i just have a napkin in my hand and i'll pull it off instead of washing. Now we're going to grab some plain orange. Just mix that in. Leaving lots of room for our highlight color. Good. Now tap your brush off or rinse it and go right into that warm yellow. I'm going to pull this into the belly and just don't go all over into the dark color. I'm just kind of touching where the dark color meets this light belly color, this light yellow. So I'm not going all out here. I'm just staying, just touching the edge of that color to blend it in. If I go all over the colors too, too much, then it's all going to turn into the same color. Nice warm belly. I'm going to do the same thing with the head.
Putting a little bit of light orange, orangey yellow over the black. This color is a little bit more see-through than the other colors. So I'm going to tone that down a bit. I'm going to take some of my light yellowish orange and really just tone down the black around the head in this bird. Okay. Good. So just go nice and slow with your blending because it's such a small area until you've got a fade that you like. Now I didn't put my black eye back in my red bird. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that now. Then I'm going to get into my yellow bird. Now for the yellow bird, just like, oh, we didn't do the tail. I didn't do my tail. You probably did your tail. I'm going to fill my tail in here. I've got this little bird going under the branch, so letting the branch stay over top. And just using a reddish orange to go over the black shadowy part. Okay. Good. There he goes. Got a little tail in there now. So now we're gonna get into her yellow bird. Just like the orange bird, we brought some red into the orange. We're gonna bring some orange into the yellow bird. So I actually outlined the yellow bird in orange and then filled it in with yellow, mixed with just a tiny bit of white. The orange and the yellow are the two most see-through colors uh, across brands in any paint set. So adding a bit of white helps to uh, darken them up. So I am just gonna use plain orange to do the shadowy part on the outside of this bird. And then in the inside, I wanna take some yellow. I'm just gonna add a little scoop of white here. Oops, and some red, that's okay. <laughs> we'll just mix right in there. There we go. So it's just a titch lighter, but that bit of titanium white really helps the paint become more opaque, uh, less see-through. So let's start by outlining our bird. Use whichever brush you like. You could use your little square brush, your little flat brush. I very much like to use my long pointy brush, my round brush. So outlining my bird. Right over the black. A little shadow through the head. Gonna come down over the black, over the V. Right over my black lines. And then I'm gonna go into my yellowish white and I'm gonna start filling in the head. In between the blacks. We'll be going over those blacks, but I love this little bits of orange and yellow in there just as a base coat to get lots of different colors in our birds. added a bit more white to my yellow. I just wanted it to be a little bit brighter. But just make a yellow that pleases you. Just have fun with it. And get down here. Now it doesn't matter really if you do the yellow or the orange first. you filled in your tail you can do the orange outlines Good. Now 
we're really going to use the white highlights and the blacks that bring out these birds, but especially that yellow bird that has the most true whites and blacks in its, in its wings. But you want to bring in this juicy, rich uh, lemon orange colors before we put our, our highlights on, just to build up some color in there. So I'm going to go back into my orange bird and I'm going to paint in his little face again. I can see it through there. I'm going to put the eye back into my yellow bird. We'll do the blacks later. I just get excited. Okay. So now we're going to get into our green bird where we're going to be using some of our plain dark green. We do want to mix a little bit of a lighter green. I love adding a little bit of yellow into my green to make it a bit more of a limey grass green. So I'm going to take a little scoop of green, kind of make a, a pastel green almost, a little bit darker than pastel. Then just grabbing a scoop of yellow uh, to warm it up. So it gives it a bit more of a pea green color, a grassy pea green that I just love. So once again, we're going to work in layers, outlining our bird in the dark color. shadow there. So you can see the green really covers the black a lot more than the orange or yellow did. So in the end we are going to take a little time to do tweaky deekies. After we fill this color layer in we'll come back in with some blacks and whites and then we can see if there's any little bits of color we might want to add in to our birds as a finishing touch. So I like to come over the black stripes in the darker color. You can still see the black through and it just gives it a really lovely, rich shadow. is a bigger bird so I'm starting to have my paint dry on me so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to get my lighter green in there now. This is a bit of a bigger bird so I'm going to use my large brown brush to fill it in. Just softly blending in my lighter green into my shadow. This is helpful to have a bit of a bigger brush on hand uh, to get the colors in there before they dry. Okay, if you prefer your little brush, you can stick with whatever works best for you. If you're at all feeling shaky, uh, you can brace your hand on your canvas, of course, just gives you a bit, a little bit more stability. Just be sure you're not putting it in the wet paint. It happens all the time. It's such a pain in the butt. Okay. These bigger brushes can really help get some softer, juicier layers of paint on there. Add just a titch of white to my light green before coming through my little stripes here. Just for a little variety in color. Maybe even a titch of my light yellow. Ooh, I like that green. Just ever so subtly different. Okay. The same thing as before. You can really fill in those tail feathers. Do the lights or the darks first. It almost doesn't matter in these smaller areas. I'm going to switch to my small brush to do the outline of the tail.
Okay. Might even add a little bit more yellow to some light green. Just warm up his belly a bit. Just tapping in some streaks. We'll highlight at the top of his face here. Can even add some little bits of kind of texture in this guy because he's so big. So little taps almost makes it look a bit more like feathers. I went through with some really bright yellow in this bird to get that. Using a light green here. Whoops, that's got red in it. Scrape that up. Okay. This painting looks nice if you can really loosen up a bit. Once you've done filling in the base of the color in your green bird, go ahead and just paint that black eye back in. The black can go over top of the wet color paint because it has so much pigment in it. It really covers everything. Okay. Now last but not least is our little blue bird. Gonna use some plain dark blue and then a nice bit of light blue. Good. So you just want a lighter blue and some of your dark blue. Now again, you can put the lighter blue in first if you like. And then the dark blue, or you can go ahead and do it the same way. We've been doing it with the dark color first. Okay. Yeah. Blend in my dark blue. A little bit of color now when you're doing little spaces. Outlining in the dark, just blending in the white color into the belly. Do the tail. Now we're gonna to want to paint our, our bluebird's eye back in. Once we filled our birds in, in their under layer of color, we're just gonna do some little tweaks with white and black. So I like to actually outline my bird's eye in white. This is a common distinctive feature of bird eyes put a little reflection in their eye and re-add any white highlights or black lines, uh, black texture into the wings that we want to really help accentuate the birds. So let's take a minute, we can let this dry, uh, use your blow dryer if you have it. Once it's dry, if you have any smudges left from your pencil that you want to erase, you can do that now. Make sure it's absolutely dry before you do any sort of erasing. And then meet me back here. If you need a little break for a snack, you can. We've done a lot of work so far today. So give yourself a good pat on the back. 
Uh, there's a lot going on here, lots of drawing, lots of new techniques. And then we're going to get back on and we're going to do the final details. We are on the last step of our rainbow birds. We're going to add the white details in and then we're going to go in for those blacks afterwards. The first thing I want you to do is replenish your white if you've run out and then really rinse off your little detail brush. We're going to make our eyes come alive by going around the outside of our eyes with a tiny white highlight. So pinch your brush down to make sure the point is nice and sharp. Go into a little bit of white. Just a little bit of paint here. A little goes a long way. Just put the tip in there. And we're gonna go around the eye. If your eyes are too big, go over top of the black. So you wanna go around the eye. Then we also wanna want a little dot in there. Uh, birds just like us have a water barrier on their eyes. So if you were to look really deeply in someone's eyes today, you'll notice we always have that uh, light reflecting in our eye. So you wanna have that for our birds too. Now if you want, you could put a little split down the beak. Go around your eye. If you like the size of your eye, go around the outside. If you wanna make them look a little bit smaller, go over top of the black instead of around it. For this little bird, I usually just go in and give him a tiny little highlight on top of his beak. And I'm gonna come around. I'm just gonna surround the eye. So you can split the beak with a little line, go around the eye, and put a little white reflection inside. can go over a second time if you like. Okay, so we've really made our eyes come alive. I want you to finish up your eyes and then we're gonna start coming through the wings and the tail with a little bit of white. For the white I'm gonna put into the wings and the tails, I want to add, I'm going to take a tiny scoop of white and I'm going to drip some water into it. This will help it be a little bit more see-through to let the other color shine through. And then I'm just going to come down just a little bit of watery white on my wing. And I'm going to come in between the color parts, leaving the dark part of the wing. You can put little highlights anywhere you'd like. You could come a little bit around the top of your head, say, if you'd like. You could put some little details in the belly. Sometimes just these little tiny drags or dots can help it look like it's a bit feathery. So I've really made my white more liquidy. Just kind of tapping in some details, or I might want to brighten up. I'm gonna do that on all of my birds. I'm gonna use a little bit of watery white, just a bit of paint. Uh, you can tap it off on a napkin. So you wanna tap off so it's just a little bit of paint. And just pull through. You can pull through in the direction of the feather. So down the wing, around the belly. little bit of paint each time. Maybe a little 
little bit of highlight in the belly here. I don't normally do too much on my little orange bird. Maybe pull a little highlight into his feathers. Sometimes I do like to go into my orangish red and just go over my shadow. Just doing last minute tweaks. Before I go back into my white, since I had orange there, I want to rinse it really well. Now for my yellow bird, I want my white to be really, really bright. So I'm going to go into a little bit of white that doesn't have any water mixed into it. And I really love to have some bright, bright white highlights down these wings here. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of a pale, pale, buttery yellow. So white with just the tiniest little bit <clears throat> of yellow in there. It's almost a pastel yellow. I'm going to pull some of that. <clears throat> Oops, there's black in there. It's okay. If you get black or a color you don't want and the underpainting is dry, you can just take a little bit of a paper towel and wipe it off. It's like a, a magic eraser. So I'm gonna get that black out of there. And just in this light, buttery white color, pull some highlights into the tail. I'm gonna use a bit of this buttery white just to put a little highlight in my head. to really brighten up my yellows. We're going to do the same thing with the green bird but using our white. So give your brush a little rinse. Get yourself some nice watery white. Make sure there's just a little bit on your brush. So tap some of that off on your napkin. And let's just come in between little pulls, some little pulls into those feathers. I do kind of white, some pure white in here. Good. You can, oh, we split his beak already. So now we can go into our blue bird and our watery white. Just pulling in some white. Pull some white into those little tail feathers just in the center. Just little highlights, letting the under color shine through. Okay. Good. So I want you to take a minute and add any white details that you like. It can be very helpful, especially when we're painting at home, to stand back from our painting and look at it from a distance. We're doing the last minute tweaky deekies, so stand back and let your intuition guide you. It doesn't have to look like mine. If you think something should be whiter or darker, you go ahead and do what you like, what your, your intuition tells you to do with your own birds. We're gonna wrap up the white highlights on the birds, and then we're just gonna do a few little last minute black tweaks as our final step. So I don't put black in all of the bird's wings. I find the purple here just very, really rich. Sometimes I'll add black into the red bird, just if I think it needs it. Add a tiny bit of water to that black paint just to help it flow. Not so much water that it drips into our beautiful rainbow, just enough that uh, it's easier to pull the paint across the canvas. So I might brighten the shadow on my bird. Just darken it. Maybe accentuate the tip. 
Uh, maybe pull over some of the black. This bird was sitting where the branch is in front. So maybe pulling the branch in front of your birds if you got a bit of paint on there. I do love to dark darken up the black in our yellow bird. This really helps this bright fellow pop. Now you don't have to cover everything in a thick line of black. A few little taps will do. You can add as much or as little as you like though. It's your bird, so it's really up to you. You can pop some of the feathers out if you like. bit of my green bird here just to help define these feathers. Yours are going to be a little bit different than mine so you put your black where you feel your painting needs it. I do feel like I lost a little bit of my fun stripes in my bluebird's wing here. This bluebird looks really dynamic. He's really lunging forward. That's just very cool. I did want my bluebird in behind my branch so I'm going to pull the branch over top here. Give him a little shadow under his chin. Okay. When you feel like you're done your bird painting, put your brushes down and take a deep breath. And you've just completed rainbow birds. I hope you feel a little bit more cheerful after painting these rainbow birds with me today. I absolutely love getting to see your finished paintings when you're done. So if you do post them to Instagram, hashtag keep it colorful, or you can post them to our Facebook group, or you can even email them to me so I can take a look at your rainbow birds. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic day, and until next time, you keep it colorful.